Hey, what's up guys? Tugi here, back again with another episode of my Buffalo Bills franchise mode series right here on Madden 19, as we today are ready. Phrase that the wrong way. Rolling with it, because redoing an intro is tiring. Today, we are ready to begin Season 2. Now, of course, I went ahead, took the liberty of setting up this team, optimizing it to the best of my ability, and this is what we are going with for our second season. Of course, Josh Allen is our guy, Ryan Mallett as the backup because there was nobody better available, but at least we got something for A.J. McCarron. LaShawn McCoy, for the love of God, stay healthy. He's our starter. Bryce Love is there, just in case. Uh, and Sherrard Reynolds is also there as a rookie. DeMarco is still the fullback. The wide receiver core, it could be better. Kelvin Benjamin still leading the way. Corey Coleman's there. Zay Jones and Vaughn Key, also Demon, uh, Demond Duncan, the Demon, as we'll call him, uh, there as well. At tight end, we're dealing with Jason Peck, Adonis Glover, and Russell Bullocks, who's not actually a captain. That's glitched, but unfortunately, what are you going to do? Glover has quick development, which is why he is second on the list over Bullocks. Uh, as far as the offensive line goes, Grant Stemke's going to be at left tackle with Rashawn Stewart as the backup. Deion Dawkins is with Thomas Mall. So again, keep in mind, as I mentioned at the end of the last episode, I went through the free agent list, signed players who would have been worth it to help bolster up this depth. And I still think the offensive line came out looking a little bit better uh, than one might have expected, and probably than it was last year. Michael Dieter at center with Max Garcia. Russell Bodine's been changed over to right guard. He's with Kevin Velasco. And Will Engelberger at right tackle. Roy Rhodes as the backup. Left end this season, the rookie Joe Jackson. Unfortunately, Shaq Lawson's going to be the odd man out as Dante Fowler's there as well. So we'll see how much of Shaq Lawson we end up seeing this season. Defensive tackle, we moved over Trent Murphy. Star, I'm sorry, you're gone. I'll show you where he ended up. Harrison Phillips is there as the backup. Hopefully he gets some decent playing time this season as we continue to try and develop him. Outside linebacker, as many of you assumed, and as I planned on doing, Tremaine Edmonds, better at outside linebacker. He's there with Shane Ray as the backup. Shazier at the middle. Edmonds will step into the middle if needed. And on the right, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson has been changed from a safety to a linebacker. Matt Milano is the depth option there. At corner, Tredavious White, Kayvon Webster, Mike Hilton, who we signed, and Julius Bradford, the draft pick, Marcus Simon. There is a backup as well. And then, of course, at safety, we're golden. Jordan Poyer's there. We do have Steven Nelson as a backup, who we moved over from corner. Micah Hyde and Justin Coleman. The kicker's Jake Elliott. The punter's Brock Blackburn, the rookie. Uh, kick return's going to be Vaughn Key. We pretty much knew that was going to be the case when we drafted him. And the last thing to double check here, if I can get there. The third down back is still going to be LaShawn McCoy. I imagine Bryce Love will get carries. Uh, he is the power back option. So I'm, I'm intrigued to see how that works out exactly. Time will tell. Uh, as far as how this season goes, there are, of course, some things that we can look to change if needed. As far as the schemes that we're running this season, vertical zone running a multiple 4-3. We're running the Houston offense in the Philadelphia defense. Uh, so again, as you may have seen, 77 overall team if this wants to load. 75 offense, 85 defense. We'll see what this team ends up being capable of. Not sure I'm expecting playoffs. Probably not, but you never know. As far as the trades go, Star went to the Giants for a fourth. He wasn't worth a whole hell of a lot. We ended up moving Nick O'Leary to the Denver Broncos as well. Those were the two trades. As far as the release list, uh, there's a couple of them. We tried out some veterans. There were a lot of free agents that I ended up signing. I told you, man, I was going to take a look at every single person that I possibly could to see who provided us the best uh, option at any given position to optimize this team to the best of my ability. And that's what I'm talking about. And that's why I didn't do it uh, on the actual video because there was a lot to check. This is the best team we could come up with at this given moment. How we do this season is a complete unknown at the moment, but we're going to find out relatively soon as let's just make our way through the preseason here. We beat Dallas 24-7 to to start the preseason. Not a bad way to go, I guess. <laughs> Could be worse. Wins may be uh, few and far between, but who knows, man? Who knows? This season, of course, about is about the development of a lot of our younger players. We start the regular season off against the Colts. 
Uh, one thing I want to do is we're actually a player down. I'm, I'm not sure where we were short. That's okay, though. Uh, the one thing we have to check, if I can hit the proper button here, would just be the finances. Of course, I want to go with the best good value to just try and get as many people into the stadium spending money as possible. And that's the way you can set it up. I talked about it before as well. Uh, for me, it's either you can charge pretty much the highest price before it hits bad value and hope that more people, uh, you know, less people will spend, but they're going to be spending more money, or you can drop the prices to the top good value and hope that more people spend less money. There's different ways to go about it. Uh, this method's worked out pretty well for me. The one downside, of course, is our concessions are only one star. They're basic. We don't have anything else. So that's something I definitely want to change and improve as soon as possible. That said, we are at home to begin this season. I'm going to handle things the same way I did last year. We'll get more of an in-depth look at every game this season. Let's jump into this, and we'll see how we end up doing against the Colts to kick things off. T.Y. Hilton and Kelvin Benjamin, the comparisons at wide, or the comparison at wide receiver. And Andrew Luck against Josh Allen. This, uh, <laughs> that is, that is a, that's a one-sided matchup for the moment, isn't it? But we have a long way to go. It's just season two. I do still feel very good about how the offseason went, the free agent signings, the draft. I feel like we did pretty well. We're definitely going into unknown territory, of course, though, for the Season 2 draft. Not using that draft class. Anything could happen moving forward. Let's get this show on the road. Let's get the regular season underway as we give up a touchdown early on. We get back with a field goal. 7-3 to at the end of the first quarter. Not great, but not terrible. We got time to get back into it. We bounce back with another field goal. Add another one on to that. Elliot has his uh, Elliot has his work cut out for him, I'm sure. Not just in this game, but all season long. Indy does get uh, does end up getting a late touchdown. 14-9 to at halftime. But we're hanging in there. Hopefully the offense can get it going a little bit more. Still looking for our first touchdown of the game and of the season. And it doesn't happen there. It's another field goal. The fourth field goal of the game for Jake Elliott, it makes it a two-point game, 14-12 as we head into the fourth quarter. Uh, we'll go change of possession for now, so we actually end up forcing a punt quite early. Once we get down towards crunch time, I'll stop. So right now, I'm only keeping an eye on the clock as we end up. We end up getting that touchdown there, but they just hit a 44-yard field goal. Malcolm Havenstein is able to bury that one, so 19-17. At this point, it was a one-yard rushing touchdown for LaShawn McCoy. Under five minutes to go. We'll be getting the ball back here. Let's see what happens. We'll go change of possession. Hopefully it doesn't count the kickoff. It probably will, and we'll probably stop it. Maybe. Possibly. Seven-yard completion for Allen to begin this drive. And let me go ahead and go back and hit change of possession. Let's see what we can do. Second and three, and LaShawn McCoy. 68-yard touchdown. We have a nine-point game with 3.02 to go. Unbelievable. That is certainly what we were missing last year. Damn, 68 yards for LaShawn McCoy, and that should steal the game. You'd like to think Jordan Poyer knocks that one down. A.J. Brown, a nine-yard reception. Luck is sacked. It's fourth and three or first down. That's really weird. Why? Wait, how the... He was sacked for a loss, and then it didn't show the fourth down play. I swear this is bugged out sometimes. Regardless, unless they pull off a late miracle here, this one is over. One minute to go. Now it's going to be fourth down, hopefully. Fourth and ten. 51-yard field goal. We're not out of the woods yet. We need to recover this onside kick, and we do. That should do it. They do have all three timeouts, actually. It's not, it's not a guarantee. Let's not get overly confident here. If McCoy can get the first down, it will be game over. As Bryce Love ends up getting a carry, third and four, and that is game. LaShawn McCoy ices it in more ways than one, 26-20. The Buffalo Bills take their opening game of the season, defending home turf and beating the Colts. Who the hell saw that coming? Not me. It was a rough start. A very rough start. Nine points. I mean, really, we didn't we didn't score a touchdown until the fourth quarter. We ended up with two, though, and that 
was the difference maker. Two rushing touchdowns for LaShawn McCoy. That was the difference maker. He was the difference maker. Uh, Josh Allen, 15 of 34, 223 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. So not a great uh, QB rating, but still not a terrible performance. LaShawn McCoy dominated, and there's no doubt that's what we missed last year. 152 yards on 26 carries with two touchdowns. That is ridiculous. Love ended up with 24 yards on seven carries. Receiving-wise, Kelvin Benjamin led the way, 67 yards on four receptions. And he was the only one of our players over 40 yards from there. So a good game for him. Uh, Blocking-wise, Dawkins gave up two sacks that game. Engelberger, Stemke gave up. I mean, just in general, uh, the QB protection from both sides was miserable. Uh, and defensively, Gardner Johnson led the way for us, at least, with nine tackles that game. Uh, Murphy himself had two sacks that game. Fowler with a sack and a half. You had Lawson in there, so he got some playing time. Harrison Phillips got some playing time, ended up with half a sack. Not too shabby. And then, man, who could be the player of the game if it wasn't for LaShawn McCoy. Four. Four field goals for Jake Elliott. And that helped lead us to victory. Elliott McCoy get the job done. And the Buffalo Bills don't look now or 1-0. It took us, what, five weeks last year to get our first win of the season? We get it out of the way early. Although we did pick up an injury. How severe an injury? Let's find out. Is it going to be a game-changing injury? Corey Coleman. It's four weeks, so it's not an outright disaster. Now, of course, the good thing is I actually have that roster spot, so I can just go ahead and sign whatever uh, whatever wide receiver option is there. It might not be the worst idea to bring in a veteran if they're still available. So let's take a look. Brashard Perryman is the best option right now. He's also a scheme fit. Uh, works for me, although Cameron McDowell. Cameron McDowell, he's 21 and a 71. I'm going to guess he has normal development. I remember him, actually. Uh, I will gladly steal him from uh, from Cincy. I wasn't sure if I wanted to put practice squad stealing on or off. Uh, normally, I like to have it off because then, you know, kind of treat it like a minor league system like you'd see in hockey or baseball. Uh, but for now, it's on, and we take advantage of it by signing McDowell. He'll end up being the fifth guy there. So, Zay Jones, no pressure. Von Key, no pressure. You're going to be... A little bit more relied upon heading into week two. We're taking on the Dolphins. We have back-to-back -back division matchups against Miami and against New England. We're down in Miami. They lost in week one. We have no other changes to make, nothing else to address. Thursday, prime time. Uh, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. We have a color rush, don't we? Classic home, classic home, anniversary. Uh, there we go, the 2017 Color Rush. Actually, current Color Rush. Shit. There we go, the All White. Or the All Red. That works too. Right? Yeah, fuck it, the All Red. Dolphins, do you have anything Color Rush? 2016 Color Rush? I mean, it's not gonna be red, so that's good. Oh, God. Oh, God, what's the alternate? You know what, we'll do that. We won't have red against orange. I think that would be just a tad bit brutal on the eyes for quite a few people, so... We'll wear the color rush, damn it. It's Thursday. Let's do it. Let's make it as legit as we can. And let's hope that we can pull off a victory here. The win against the Colts, that's nice. But of course, these division matchups are that much more important. And without our second best receiver, I'm not sure exactly how we'll do. But obviously, having LaShawn McCoy is a major major uh, upgrade for this team. It's an upgrade without having to go out and make an upgrade. Just having him healthy for this season could mean so much for us. Uh, but let's get this game underway. Let's sim to the end of the first quarter. We'll see who has the lead. 3 to nothing, Miami early on, and that is the only score. That is the only difference on the scoreboard in the first quarter. So 3 nothing, Dolphins will go to halftime. We get the offense going now. 6 to nothing. Miami make it 9 off of a turnover. We end up getting our first points of the game, and that is how the first half will end. So four field goals in this game, 9-3. to three. Our red zone defense has been superb, but the offense right now is struggling to get going. It's another slow start. We jump into the third quarter, 10-9. to nine. We get on the board early. The Dolphins, though, 15-10, to 10, heading in to the fourth quarter. So I want to see who ended up with that touchdown, actually. 
Let's take a look at how that went down. It was a one-yard touchdown rush from Josh Allen. There you go. Unfortunately, they bounced back a 24-yard touchdown pass for Danny Amendola. We're down by five. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to sim to about the final five minutes or so. We take an 18-15 lead, now 22. Oh, boy. Well, it was looking good. It was 18-15, then 22-18, and now 25-18 for the Dolphins. Not great. Bryce Love with a one-yard touchdown rush, but from there, another touchdown pass to Danny Amendola and a 25-yard field goal for Cody Parkey uh, and Bobby McCain with an interception. So that leads to the Dolphins having the ball at our five. I said our red zone defense was pretty damn good. Uh, we're going to put that to the test here. And for the record, can I handle this like I handle it in MLB? Do I have the... I do have... Ah, controller select not available. Okay, so unfortunately we do have to stick with who we have, so I can't watch the play go down. We'll jump back into Super Sim. We will uh, bump it to normal. We'll go change of possession. Will the Dolphins score here? It's a two-yard rush for Kenyon Drake. If they score, this game is over. And there it is. The touchdown for Alex Collins, a player we were considering signing. And unfortunately, it's going to backfire. Uh, we need to make quick work of their defense on this drive if we stand a chance. And that penalty from Engelberger is not really going to help. 23-yard completion of the tight end, Jason Peck. Like what I see there, another penalty. Great. 15-yard penalty against the Dolphins. That uh, gives us a chance. LaShawn McCoy, 7 yards as we approach the 2-minute warning. <sighs> Come on, we can do this. We can do this. 12-yard reception for Duncan. We're on the three. Touchdown, Jason Peck. Three-yard touchdown pass. A pretty quick drive. 118 to go. The onside kick uh, attempt fails, but we're not done yet. If we can stop them, they'll burn our timeouts, but we're not quite done yet. Five-yard penalty against the offense is extremely helpful. Three-yard rush or a minus three-yard rush for Collins. Somehow we're a timeout down. Was it an injury timeout? That's the only thing that makes sense. Uh, are we going to be too low on time? Fourth and nine. They do punt. We have a chance here. Can we complete this drive? 32 seconds. No timeout starting on our own two. Is there a miracle in Miami? Nine or six yard completion to Zay Jones and the clock expires. So too little, too late. Unfortunately, this Thursday night football matchup goes to the Dolphins. Uh, not ideal, of course, losing our first uh, division matchup of the season. Uh, Allen, 32 of 41, though. Pretty solid, but with that rating, you know that there's going to be some picks. He had 321 yards, one touchdown, three interceptions for Josh Allen. So everything was looking great, but when he didn't get a completion, it was pretty much intercepted. So not ideal. Uh, a learning curve for sure. McCoy held to just 61 yards. Uh, Bryce Love, the only rushing touchdown. Actually, Allen, never mind. Allen also had that rushing touchdown in the game. Uh, Vaughn Key stepped up when needed. 98 yards receiving, 94 for Stills, 86 Zay Jones. Who ended up with the receiving touchdown? It was Jason Peck. That's right, right at the end of the game. Uh, in terms of blocking, uh, still not a great game. Engelberger, Stem Key struggling, both allowing two at the tackle positions. And then let's see here. Gardner Johnson, again, leading the way in tackles with 10. On the team, you get a look at the sacks. Fowler Jr. with two and a half. Murphy with one that game. Not too bad. Unfortunately, Dre Kirkpatrick and Bobby McCain had quite a lot of fun playing against Josh Allen. Uh, Elliott, one for one. It, uh, it works, but man, that sucks. The three interceptions. Everything else was looking great. Over 300 yards. Those interceptions did not help in the slightest. So we drop our Week 2 matchup. Uh, and Gardner Johnson's already earned a skill point, which is great. I'm really hoping he develops into the player that I know he can be. Uh, that's superstar development. So, looking here, obviously power moves, finesse moves, block shedding, recognition, awareness could all go up. So what would be the best way to go? Well, there's block shedding for run stopper. That would certainly help. Zone man pursuit, I believe. Ah, uh, power rusher. You know what, we'll make him better as a run stopper. Maybe. I mean, block shedding needs to go up. It's obviously the scheme fit. Power rusher. 
you know, well, let's go with Run Stopper. Let's go with Run Stopper. We'll just make him that much better in the role. He ends up getting four points. Acceleration, Awareness, Pursuit, and plus two to tackling for the 22-year-old. He is going to be a monster for us. Make no mistake about it. We move on to week three. We're playing the New England Patriots. We'll see what we can do. But we do have our first bit of scouting. If I'm not mistaken right now, we're rolling with an offensive line scout. So that'll be our primary focus, which it probably should be. LaShawn McCoy, we will talk at the end of the season, sir. Uh, no reason, despite us having all the money in the world, no reason to discuss right now. Especially with now with your injury history. We will avoid that situation. And indeed, we have an offensive line scout. So let's take a look. Watts Paul... Looking pretty good. Jason Hansen. Eh. Uh, we'll take a look at pretty much everybody here, I'd say. For the offensive line, it's such a high-need position. I shouldn't have scouted that extra guy. It's such a high-need position for us that I need to find whoever the hell I can. So, unfortunately, too, if it's only one B grade for you, I'm not really thinking I'm going to scout out uh, the rest of your report there. Zebedee Whiteside. God, God, I hope we end up with him. What a tremendous name. Uh, we have nothing else to handle. Let's do this. We're off to Gillette playing the 1-1 one one Patriots, the 81-rated Pats against the 77-rated Bills. Let's do this. Week 1, we beat the Colts. Week 2, we lose to the Dolphins. Week 3, can we get back to our winning ways? What's going to happen here? Devin McCourty, 12 tackles on the season already. 99% sure Brady did not retire in year one, at the very least, I don't believe he retired in year one with me with the Lions, so maybe I'm confusing it. I think he played in that extra season. We'll see what happens here. James White, uh, definitely outmatched by LaShawn McCoy thus far, but obviously different systems. And we're not going to get that quarterback comparison. Shazier's doing really well, though. 15 tackles already. Uh, big, big difference maker to have him in the lineup. And again, as mentioned, originally I was going to use the franchise guy's custom rosters they weren't done when we started this series so i went with the most up-to-date ea roster he was still in uh whatever series we do after this which is way down the road by the way but whatever series we do after this of course we'll be using the franchise guys updated roster uh, to kind of have more of a realistic spin to it uh, that said game three of the season well let's do this to the end of the first quarter we go how will we do we end up getting a touchdown in the first quarter that is shocking seeing how this season's gone for us i'll take it I will take it. Koskowski missed a 61-yard attempt. Good Lord, it was a three-yard rushing touchdown for Bryce Love. That's what I like to see. The rookie getting on the board yet again. The Patriots are on the board with a field goal. We get one right back, and suddenly, oh my God. Suddenly it went from uh, a pretty good situation to a very not good situation. That is unfortunate. Elliott hit the field goal. I really wish the scores weren't uh, glitched out. I think then it was 10 to 14, 34 yard pass. No, Brady is gone. It's Kenny Rutherford, a 34 yard pass to Willie Sneed. And then from there, an interception by Jason McCourty leads to a Gronk eight yard touchdown. Damn. Not great. That was the, we, we saw that against the Dolphins as well as so we jump into the third quarter here. We saw that against the Dolphins as well. Uh, those interceptions making us very susceptible to heavy point swings. And as it is, we're down 24-13 heading into the fourth quarter. Not looking too good for us here, but we do have time. They make it 27. We do get on the board, though. 27-20, 4.46 to go. We'll follow along from here. Let's take a look at what it was. It was a one-yard touchdown pass to Kelvin Benjamin and Shaq Lawson. Just recovered possession. 75 yards is probably a lie, but he recovers the fumble. We have the ball at the 11. 4.46 to go, down by 7. There's a good chance here for us to get back into this. The Jets are beating up the Dolphins right now, which makes me... I, I wonder how good the Jets are. It makes me feel bad that we lost to the Dolphins. Let's see what happens here. I said we were susceptible, and we definitely are to those momentum swings. Can we pull off a swing of our own here? In terms of getting back into this game, three yards from McCoy, third down coming up, third and seven, touchdown Bills! Eight-yard touchdown pass to Kelvin Benjamin, his second touchdown in the red zone, and we're all tied up, 27 all, with under four minutes to go. Let's see if the defense can hold on here, and can their rookie quarterback lead the way? 
although right now James White is getting the job done. Rutherford throws that one away. Second and 10, he throws that one away as well. Third and 10 with 2.20 to go. It's a drop pass for Edelman. Our defense does, in fact, hold up. We'll have the opportunity here to get the job done. Now, they pinned us back. Another coffin corner, and unfortunately, we're already facing a third and four. We get the first down with McCoy, though. Is there any, or, oh God, I don't think, hold on here. Now, see, this is a glitch, unfortunately, where our AI, they're not going to be smart enough to call timeouts. I don't want to jump into the game. You know me if you followed any of my series. I don't like jumping into the game. But the AI is not going to be smart enough to call timeouts here. They're going to shoot themselves in the foot time and time again. So I think... Oh God. I can jump in the Super Sim from here. Let's do jump next play. Second and 13. 21 yards for Benjamin. Okay, they did call a timeout that time. Okay, maybe it was an injury timeout. I don't know. It's so weird and inconsistent. First and 10 on the 35. Let's run this play. 21 yards for Peck. And again, we call the timeout. All right, maybe they fixed it. We have a chance. Ball on the 44. 11 seconds to go. We have one timeout. Let's run this next play. First and 10. Allen throws it away. And with five seconds left, we're either going to look to pull off a hell of a field goal here from Jake Elliott, or we're going to shoot for the end zone. Let's see what happens. What's going to happen? We're going to overtime. I think the clock expired. Again, so weird with the way management is. Not a big fan of it, but we are going to overtime 27 all. And we will start off with possession. Let's do this. Here we go. First and 10 from the 25. Love only picks up a yard. Second and nine. Two yards for McCoy. We're facing a third and seven early on. Can we get the conversion? 24 yards for Vaughn Key. There we go. Looking much better. First and 10 from the New England 48. Allen throws it away. Second and 10. Five-yard penalty against Dawkins. Great timing. Second and 15. Five-yard rush for McCoy. He gets the penalty back. Third and 10 from the Patriots 49. Can we get another big conversion? <laughs> yes, we can. And it's Vaughn Key yet again. First and 10 from the 29. And Allen sacked by Danny Shelton. An eight-yard loss. It'll be second and 18 from the 37. 26-yard completion for Zay Jones. We have a chance. Ball at the 11. First and 10. Can we seal the deal? Yes, we can. It's not going to tell me who. It's not going to tell me how. But we win it in overtime. 33-27. to 27. What happened at the end? Highlights. Let's see. An 11-yard touchdown reception for Vaughn Key to end the game. We complete the fourth quarter comeback. We win it in overtime. What an effort from Vaughn Key on that drive. A 24-yard reception, a 20-yard reception, both on third down, and in first and 10 from the 11, an 11-yard touchdown reception. Vaughn Key, have yourself a game, and credit to Josh Allen. One hell of an effort. 29 of 44, 360 yards, three touchdowns, two picks. But he gets the W and put together... Uh, one hell of a, well, really, I mean, not one hell of a final drive. We struggled on that final drive, but the drive before. <laughs> and there's Kenny Rutherford for the Patriots. Rushing-wise, McCoy, 99 yards on the day. Love, only 13 yards on four carries, but a touchdown. Uh, Receiving-wise, Zay Jones, 90 yards on the game. Peck with 82. Uh, Benjamin with 70, two touchdown receptions. And Vaughn Key, a crucial play, getting the game winner. Uh, McCoy allowed a sack that game, as did Dieter, but we kept it down for the most part. Uh, and defensively leading the way for us uh, was Jadavius White with eight tackles in that game. Uh, Lawson and Murphy each with a sack. Interception-wise, McCourty, uh, Landon Roberts, and uh, that's right, there were only two. And Shazier got the one for us, so not bad. And then kicking-wise, Jake Elliott, two of three, so was Goskowski. Not too bad. It's a victory in the books at the very least. At the very least, we move to 2-1 and one on the season. And we get our first win against a division rival. So I like what I'm seeing. Do we have an upgrade point? We do not. But we move to 2-1 and one on the year. A much better start, but we have a hell of a challenge facing us coming forward here. As we get to play the Eagles. Not really looking forward to it. 
Coleman will sit this game out in the meantime. We're not going to risk him injury-wise. Negotiations we'll worry about later. For now, let's focus on the scouting. We have that next batch of points. Let's see who we can find. Hello, Ryan Lonnie. Not too shabby. Uh, Beckham, not so much. Uh, left guard, certainly not as many options. We have Alan Cobb, who's meh. Wesley Green, not great at all. Daniel Sweeting, a little bit better. Martinez Goodwin, no thank you. Brennan Starkey, looking okay. And Scott with one T, Arugamer. The Rogue. Unfortunately, he's terrible, so we'll avoid him. Uh, Pierce Casey, or Casey, will be the next guy that we scout out. Starts off with a B-, minus, not that promising. Again, we don't have the XP right now to afford all the extra scouting, so we're doing what we can. That said, week four, let's jump into it. Playing the 3 and O oh, Eagles. Not, not good. They have a 10 overall point advantage. I am thankful that we won two out of three before running into the Eagles because I, I'm sorry, I like where our team's heading. I think we're a better team than we were last year. No disrespect to Kyle Williams and Lorenzo Alexander, but I, I think we're in a lot of trouble here, to say the least. Let's, let's put it nicely, and let's just say that we're in a lot of trouble here, right? I feel like that's fair. Although McCoy having over 300 yards heading into the fourth game of the year, that's... That is a true difference maker for us on offense, no doubt. No doubt. Would have been nice to have Bryce Love last year had that injury gone down just the same way. But let's do this. Our week four matchup against Philadelphia. Not that hopeful, but anything could happen. Let's see how it goes. We'll sim to the end of the first quarter. Who will strike first? And the answer, your Buffalo Bills. I feel like I called us the Sabres earlier. You have to excuse me, of course. I have a Sabres series ongoing as well. Uh, mistakes will happen. It ended up being, what was it? A six-yard touchdown pass to the tight end, Adonis Glover. Hell of a name. Golden Gloves. I'll take it. A 7 nothing lead early. Let's move closer to halftime here. Philly gets on the board with a field goal. Can we extend our lead? The answer is no. A scoreless. Well, actually, not a scoreless. When did that field goal come up? That field goal came up in the second quarter. A score of the second quarter for us, at the very least. So I'm not going to say that some sort of tech issue didn't require me uh, pausing the video for a moment, pausing the recording for a moment. Uh, it did. So admittedly, my momentum's a little bit gone. Regardless, we're up 7-3, to three, heading into the second half. Something I certainly did not expect. Let's see if we can keep this up, shall we? Let's sim the third quarter. See how it goes. A little bit of insurance would be great, and we do get it. It's 10 to 3, but Philly ties it late. It's 10 all heading into the fourth quarter. Not exactly what I was hoping for. An interception again thrown by Josh Allen. Not great. Our defense held up. It was a 50 yarder for Jake Elliott. Let's see what happens. Let's get closer towards the end of this quarter. Philly with the field goal and then a touchdown to boot. It's a seven-yard touchdown pass from Wentz to Alshon Jeffrey. 20 to 10 out of nowhere, and this is not looking good. We do have a little bit of time, but certainly looking like we've let this lead and this potential victory on the road slip away from us. It'll be a third and one, third and inches actually, and an eight-yard reception for Benjamin. We need to make the most of this drive, of course. Sooner the better. And then a 15-yard penalty against the defense. Michael Bennett, thank you very much. Uh, the sooner the sooner, the better as far as taking advantage of this, although we're going to be facing a third and 10 here. We're in field goal range, though. I'll take it. 48-yarder from the former Eagle. Elliott is good. And we have the chance. 3.33 to go. If the defense can hold up and we don't have to waste any timeouts, that opportunity is still there to get something out of this game. Can the defense hold on is the question. We have a third and four coming up here. And I believe we're good. Maybe. Somehow it ended up being a first down. See, that's what I'm talking about. These things just don't make sense. The Eagles continuing onward. And they do punt with 130 to go. They get us back to the 23. We have a chance. 130 to go with no timeouts. Can Josh Allen lead the way? He 
throws away the ball, though. Here's second and 10 coming up. Seven yards for Vaughn Key. That might kill the clock. Of course, you can't really tell where he caught it. Third and three. An incomplete pass. And with 46 seconds to go, the game is on the line. Fourth and three from the 30. It's a five-yard rush for Love. Very risky. 20 seconds to go. It's going to take a miracle at this point. We run it again with Love. God, the AI is dumb sometimes. And that will do it. <sighs> Unfortunately, we let it slip away from us. We very much had this game... Uh, this is very much winnable. We had an opportunity to win this game tied at 10 heading into the fourth quarter, and the defense could just not hold on. Uh, Josh Allen, I mean, that rating, good Lord, you know interception-wise it's going to be bad. 23 of 46, 260 yards and a touchdown. Two picks. Two picks. Unfortunate. Rushing-wise, LaShawn McCoy has his worst game of the season. 32 yards on only 12 carries. So you could just tell the offense not feeling it in this game. Receiving-wise, Zay Jones, 82 yards on six catches on six receptions, but just not what we're looking for. Adonis Glover was, of course, the recipient of that touchdown pass. Blocking-wise, uh, McCoy, Engelberger, and Stemke each give up a sack. Nothing too crazy. Uh, but you can tell by the, the leading tacklers. We had three guys in double digits. We did not have much of the ball. Murphy with the sack that game. The picks from McLeod and Nigel Bradham. Definitely not what we were hoping for here. Elliott was two for two. But, again... Just not what we needed. Uh, the defense had an opportunity to maybe seal this one out for us. They just could not do it. And, of course, the offense just couldn't get it going. Uh, blame the fact that the Eagles have a strong defense. Uh, blame our uh, sophomore quarterback. Just blame the fact that they're a much better team than us. Call it what you will. Regardless, we end up losing and falling to 2-2 two and two on the season. In Week 5, we actually play the 2-2 two and two Washington Redskins. Uh, Corey Coleman is going to be back from injury. He's already back in as our second wideout. Not too shabby. And I think we will sim this final game of the episode against Washington to see if we can end the early stages of the season with a winning record. For now, centers. Do we have anybody that's half decent? I mean, Oscar Francisco was looking kind of okay. And then our scout said he's a sixth-round talent. This is not looking promising. Riley Duff's okay but in terms of a game changer at center, Kale Lorig's all right. Uh, and Anthony Silva's okay, too. Go figure. The two fifth-round projecteds, or two of the three fifth-round projecteds, end up being half-decent. Pretty much nobody at right guard. Might not be the best draft for O-line. Nathan Brady, though, uh, could be that potential game changer. And Cameron Gunheim, the Gunheim, uh, looking pretty good as well as, hey, we're up to 31st in value. Don't look now. We're making money. The question is, can we get the job done on the field here in week five? Can we end this episode on an overly positive note? Regardless, it's positive. We're not starting off the year 0-4. Uh, LaShawn McCoy started off the year hot. The last two games, he kind of dropped off a little bit. Uh, but things are looking much better for this team, of course. Obviously, we have some concerns. Uh, Allen's ability to play in this offense, of course is a concern, although it is set up to be a strong suit for him. Uh, of course, we want to hold on to him, and we're going to try like hell to develop him for as long as we can. Whether or not he ends up being the answer here, though, that's that's a whole nother question. And I suppose we'll continue to do, uh, you know, at, at the very least, we'll continue to scout out quarterbacks in the first round and see if anyone's really worth going after. And of course, it depends on our regular season success. Speaking of which, let's do this. Week 5, let's see what we can do against Washington. Can we get off to a good start? We're down 3 to nothing. We may just score at the beginning of the second. Second and 3 on the 9. So we have a good chance here, but we are down 3 to nothing. Let's go to halftime. And we're held to a field goal. Very disappointing. Washington goes down the field. Gets a field goal back. We march down. Get a touchdown out of it. It's 10 to 6 at halftime. Not bad. Let's take a look at the play. Who ended up getting that one for us? It was Calvin Benjamin, yet again. Five-yard touchdown pass for the main man at wideout. We have that four-point lead heading into the second quarter. Let's see how we do in the third. We give up a touchdown to start. We get a field goal back to tie it. 13-all. Heading in to the fourth quarter. 
Same situation we were dealing with the last game. Uh, I'd like to think we have a slightly better chance to win this one. Let's see if we can get the job done. Let's do this. Let's see how it goes. Touchdown, Washington. And with under five minutes to go, it's still 20-13. to 13. We have the ball on our own 36. Unfortunately, it's third and 21. We're facing one hell of a situation here, and I'm not feeling all that confident about it. Third and 21. Ball's thrown away. We will be forced to punt here. Uh, whether or not our defense can hold up and get us back possession quickly, uh, that will decide the game. Toller drops a pass from Alex Smith. Thompson loses three yards on the rush, third and 13, and Trey Quinn breaks our hearts a little bit there. Trent Murphy with the sack, second and 15, four-yard rush. It'll be third and 11 or second and 15 again. Okay, just keep glitching out. Oddly enough, we should be getting the ball back here regardless, fourth and eight, and indeed we are. It's a touchback, 121 on the clock, starting at our own 20, two timeouts. Can Josh Allen do it? First and 10. Quentin Dunbar knocks away a pass. Second and ten. Josh Allen throws it away. All right. A little bit of trouble here. Third down. Can we get anything going? 11-yard reception for Calvin Benjamin. Nice. 33 seconds on the clock. What can we do? Four-yard pass to Coleman. I don't like that. Second and six. A pass is knocked away by Jake Ryan. It's third and six. 23 seconds to go. Ten-yard reception for Benjamin. But we were forced to use our last timeout. 12 seconds to go. We just got to bomb it to the end zone and we're going to fall short. We're going to fall short. Washington takes it. We fall to 2-3 and three on the season. Not what we were looking for. That little bit of hope and optimism. It's starting to, uh, starting to decline just a little bit. We had the chance to win it, and again, we just couldn't seal the deal. The offense certainly struggling a little bit. In a way, I mean, Allen's constantly getting two to 300 passing yards a game, uh, 25 of 43 at a touchdown. No interceptions that game either. Uh, I'm just going to guess maybe it was the struggles of our rushing game. Indeed, it was, as Bryce Love, I mean, I don't know what's going on all of a sudden with the attempts and why we're not running the ball as much, uh, but that's definitely a factor as to why we are struggling, I would say. Uh, Benjamin, 92 yards in the air. The only receiving touchdown of the game. Blocking-wise, gave up three, four sacks. Jesus Christ. That was just a rough game in general for everybody on the offensive line. Uh, defensively, Gardner Johnson and White with 10 tackles each leading the way. Murphy, two sacks that game. Not too bad, but unfortunately, this just was not, was not the game that we needed. Elliott was two for two. He did what we needed him to what we needed him to do, but unfortunately, uh, we fall just short. And again, we fall down now to two and three on the season. Like I said, as uh, Deion Dawkins improves, there is a little bit more optimism surrounding this team. Uh, but we are letting some games slip away from us uh, that really were winnable. Uh, let's see here. He's not particularly great at anything. The pass block needs slight improvements, but we can just make him better. Uh, as an agile O-lineman, just to get those point boosts, not bad, awareness, lead block, pass block, finesse, both over, not bad, not too shabby, we'll head to week six, we'll begin, uh, we'll begin there in the next episode, I wanted to get a decent portion of the season done with, again, two and three to start, it's not a terrible situation, as the Patriots are at three and two, the Jets may be able to match that, it's still the early goings of the season, uh, but obviously, as mentioned, losing some games that were certainly winnable. As far as what we do in the next episode, it really depends on what this team does, how we perform in the next few weeks, uh, particularly here against Cincinnati and Dallas. I don't see us as sellers at the deadline. I think regardless, we just stick with this team and we go for it as best we can at the very least, to keep a decent team around Josh Allen and not have this team be completely miserable. Um, as far as whether or not we can find any further success this season, I, I feel like a 7-9 finish is possible, right? I mean, I'm aiming for about seven wins this season. That, that's the goal. Any more than that would be great. I feel like that's possible. 
Whether or not that happens, of course, we'll find out. And as I said, how we handle the episode depends on whether or not we continue to win games. Uh, Much like last year, if we're losing games, I'm just going to sim through the season that much more quickly. We won't waste time with the games that are not important once it's clear that we're out of the playoffs. Uh, That said, I hope you did enjoy this episode. A decent start. Not a great start, but a decent start to Season 2. You know the deal. Any suggestions, the feedback, whatever. I hope you're enjoying this series. I'm having a lot of fun with Madden, of course. But, well, uh, on stream, there has been a controller spike. No such uh, no such occurrence yet on the YouTube side of things with the Bills, so that's good. Hopefully it stays that way and we can find success, but I still think we have a long way to go. For now, though, again, hope you enjoyed. If you did, you know the deal. Support the video, support the channel. I thank you for it. Have a good one. Take it easy, and I'll see you next time. Yeah. <laughs>